Hey, what's happening, Nation? It's SJ. Y'all starting to realize why I was so damn happy that Gruden is no longer a part of this freaking team? We came out and completely rolled the Philadelphia Eagles today. This game was not even close. Oh, but Joku, it's just new coach euphoria. Y'all can straight suck it. This is a group of men that realize they had the talent on this team, and it doesn't matter who the freaking coach is. They are going to carry themselves to the playoffs and into the Super Bowl this year. I am calling that shit right now. I said it as soon as Gruden resigned from this team that Derek Carr had the most unique opportunity in football ever, and he's taking full advantage of that shit, and it's only going to get better and better. He finally has a good playbook that he has completely mastered and taken the only thing wrong with it and thrown it in the trash. The fact that he does not have Gruden in his ear before every single play and second guessing every decision that he wants to make because he knows he's going to catch shit when he runs to the sidelines is gone and he's completely comfortable right now. He's going through all his checks. He's making all his audibles. He knows that if he messes up, he's not going to catch a bunch of shit when he goes to the sideline. It's going to be okay. What do we do next? The fact that he's ultimately in complete control of this offense takes away every limitation that he had. He had one incompletion for the majority of this game, and it was that tip ball that ended up going for a pick. Yeah, a lot of people gave Rashard shit for that, but that was a bad throw. I mean, watch the play again. It was a terrible throw. He did his best. I honestly think he was just trying to knock that thing down. It tipped off his hand, and the defender was standing right there. But Derek Carr's ass was 31 of 34 today. Over 300 yards, two touchdowns, and then that one pick. He literally dismantled that Philadelphia secondary single-handedly. He hit nine different receivers today. Like we were talking about last night, he was working those slants. He was working those interior routes. I talked about Hunter Renfro having a big-ass game today. He ended up having seven catches for 58 yards. Darren Waller wasn't able to go, so Foster Moreau had to step up. I said last night that I wanted him to prove something to me. His ass came out there and proved every single thing that I wanted him to. That is the reason I had so much faith in that fucking kid, because I knew he was going to stand up and end up just playing phenomenally. Six catches, 60 yards, 10-yard average, and a touchdown pass that was beautiful that he ripped over that dude's head to make sure he secured it. Zay Jones got in on the action. Alec Ingold had that 30-yard catch down, running down the sideline. Brian Edwards got into the house. We saw Mariota end up coming on and taking a run, but just showing a different element to this offense. They're going to continue to slowly work him into this. But just the fact that we got to see it during this game is a really good sign that he's actually healthy and ready to start playing again. And I did not hear Alex Leatherwood's ass's name until the end of the third quarter. There was like a minute left in the third, and then he finally got his first penalty. And I did not hear shit from him for the rest of the game. This offensive line honestly looks like it has come together, and they are starting to gel. They played a solid-ass game today. Josh Jacobs, six carries. 30 yards, ended up having a touchdown. He got hurt right before halftime and then ended up going into the back. I'm not too sure what happened with that. We're going to have to keep a real close eye and see what that injury report says. It sucks if we lose him again just because we have taken so long without him. He was finally getting his self work back in and now all of a sudden he gets hurt and then we did not see him for the rest of this game. But we have proven this offense fires on all cylinders without him on the field. Kenyon Drake stepped up and ended up having a huge game. 14 carries, 70 yards, 4.9 yard average, and he got into the house. That dude has turned it on over the past two weeks. And I am excited as hell to see that because I have talked him up so damn much because he was a thousand yard back. Him and Josh Jacobs had the same exact statistical line last season. And then we had both of them on the same damn team. His ass is only going to continue to get better and better the more him and Carr work together, the more play time he gets, and the more he learns this system. Even one of the announcers said it during the game today. Rick Olson and Derek Carr have taken John Gruden's offense, trimmed it down, made it streamlined, and now they just play extremely fast. You know how many teams in the NFL can keep up with an offense that plays as fast as we were playing today? Like three, and that is it, across the NFL. If we continue to play at the level we're at right now, we will continue to roll straight through some teams. This 2-4 and four Eagles team was nothing more than a bump in the road. A lot of people, including myself, thought this really could have been a trap game for the Raiders, but it was not. It was a bump in the road that we ran straight freaking over as we crushed them. On the defensive side of the ball, Gus Bradley's defense once again has stepped up completely. Oh, Joku, a top 20 defense won't make a difference. This team sucks. A top 20 defense and we're sitting at 5-2. and two. Wake the fuck up. This team is legit. We are on the map and we are going to continue to roll through teams. Joku, what the hell are you talking about? We don't have any depth at that cornerback position. Brandon Faison led our team in tackles today. That kid played lights out once again. 
Based on what I've seen off of him over the past two weeks, I will tell you right now, Damon Arnett's ass is going to get traded before that deadline, and I'm just hoping we get some kind of value out of it, and I'm not pissed about it at all. Denzel Perryman ended up playing another spectacular game, but he ended up getting banged up right at the end of this. That was a really weird hit that he ended up taking on that ball. All three of them were trying to pick off. It seemed like Dalen Levitt like, came down on, on his back, but his leg was kicked out to the side. That shit looked really weird. I'm really hoping that he stays completely healthy. He has been one of our biggest pieces to this defense. Abram continues to just quietly have one of the best seasons he's ever had. Corey Littleton looked pretty damn good again, and Yannick ended up going off. I think he was tired of a lot of people starting to talk shit about him and thinking, like, was he a waste of money? Is he overpaid? Is he this? Is he that? I've always talked about his ass just drawing that double team and Mad Max just kind of being freed up to do whatever he wants. Mad Max got a little bit more attention during this game, and Yannick fucking went off. It was a beautiful sight. Those two work at the ends of your defensive line, and then the interior pressure of a dude like Jefferson, who came in and just played such an awesome game. That strip he had was beautiful. Hankins played awesome. Solomon Thomas came in and was playing awesome. I'm jacked as shit about this team right now. I know we have some incredibly tough games coming up, but next week should just be another bump in the damn road. We'll be sitting at 6-2, and two, and even if we eat shit over that three-week span where we have three really hard matchups, like back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, come out of that shit sitting at 7-4, and four, we are still looking damn, damn good. And just as a quick little side note, watching the Chiefs get completely shit on today was one of the most beautiful things I've seen in a long damn time, but it shows how fucking strong that Titans team is. We're sitting in first place in the West right now, and I'm going to keep this shitty and grin on my face until we lose that spot. For everybody out there that still has doubts or they don't want to believe in this team, it's time to pack that shit up, put it away. you got to jump on the bandwagon of this team. They need all the support they can get for the remainder of this season, and I know a lot of you guys just love this team for no other reason just so you can hate this fucking team. I will never understand it, but this season, this year, right now, is completely ready to go. The only problem that we had on this team that was holding us back is sitting at his house in Florida. It is time to take this shit to the next level. Until next time, guys, I'm SJ. We will catch you on the next one.